Hi, I've got lots of suggestions when it comes to making tin art. I've been doing it for over 10 years and it's my passion. I, You can see I'm surrounded by tin. I, I'm crazy for it. Crazy for making art out of it. And I'd like to tell you how. One of the things you can start with is getting this book by Bobby Hansen. Um, this is the second edition. It's out of print, but you can find it on Amazon. Um, this artwork was done by Harriet Estelle Berman. And she's just the queen of tin. She's amazing. If you're not familiar with her, I suggest you look her up. You can go to my website at jennyphilius.com and click on links, and there'll be a link to her site. She is amazing. The thing about this one, um, being the second edition, is that it has a gallery of tin artists. And one of them is Robert Villamanga, who's a friend of mine and also an excellent tin artist. So it's worth checking out. Also, there's another book, but we'll talk about that another time. Okay, so um, you don't really need a lot to start uh, making tin art. It's good to have a can opener because <laughs> uh, you'll want to um, do this part on your can opener. And then you, know, you take a pair of shears. That's a tool you're going to need. I like these because of the long handle. And you're going to cut down the side. And then it's going to be like this. And um, I used to uh, drive over it with my car to flatten it, but um, I don't do that anymore because I went to Harbor Freight and I got one of these. It's really great. It's like four bucks and you can, you can flatten it with that. So every can, in my opinion, every can is got some element that you can use. I particularly like this one because of the duck and I also really like the uh, text and I made a little piece out of it just using those which works pretty well. I haven't finished the edges, but that's another video. So the things you need to start are your snips, some wood, uh, some nails. Uh, these are wire nails. You get them at the lumber yard. The wood you can get in the scrap uh, bin at the lumber yard. Sometimes they'll give it to you. Sometimes it's they'll charge you, but you know, it depends on where you go and and it's not expensive. You also need a hammer. I like this one a lot. It's lightweight, um, fits my hand nicely. An awl, or you can use um, a nail setter if it's got a nice tiny point. And that's, that's really about it. I like these, these are bonsai shears um, because you can make fine cuts with them. But starting off, you don't really need them. You know, see if you like doing this before you invest in a bunch of tools. So where do you find tin? Well, my goodness, it's everywhere. It's in yard sales. It's at thrift stores. Um, it's antique malls, restaurants, the dollar store. Uh, restaurants sometimes have olive oil cans that they'll give you or big soy sauce uh, cans. Um, the dollar, did I say the dollar store? Dollar store is another place. Friends will give it to you uh, when they find out that you're into it. I find it in my driveway often. Um, online auctions, but it can get pricey and you don't want to spend a lot in the beginning. Um, you want to see if you like doing this. And then if you like doing it, then you realize that you need a lot of tin to do it. Uh, the, speaking of which, there are a lot of different kinds of tin. Uh, if you get a tray, sometimes it can be too hard to cut through, so you just want to use it as your... Uh, your support and you can poke holes in it and pop rivet um, flowers on it or do whatever you want and then that's another video I'll show you how to pop rivet but that that's another video um, cookie tins candy tins coffee tins tea tins toys uh, foot lockers that big piece of black uh, tin behind me is from a foot locker and if you get a foot locker and you can get them for as little as five dollars um, and that's a nice big piece uh, you want to take it apart from the inside open it up and start peeling away the inside to take it apart. It, it works a lot better. Um, lunch boxes. Oh, there's so many different kinds of tin and it's everywhere. So that's a good start. So uh, I did a little instructional video um, that's connected to this one. I'll show you how to make something like this. Very easy, very quick. Um, in my next video, I'll show you different ways to finish the edges. I know, I know quite a few different ways that are fun. And um, so stay tuned. Thanks. Oh, 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 one other thing. Uh, make sure you have your tetanus shot. Use gloves. Have bandages and alcohol available to you. Um, you will get cut. I get cut regularly. Um, I try not to. 
Um, and I've only been to the emergency room once. <laughs> um, but wear gloves and be safe. Thanks. Okay, so I've got my wood. This is uh, about half inch plywood. And I've cut out a piece of tin from the footlocker. I usually just take the very tiniest um, cuts on the corners to keep them from being too pokey. Got my awl. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Get my little nail in there. If you go to jennyphilius.com and click on blog, you can go to my blog and then click on tin tips and there'll be a list of tools for doing this. So essentially what you're doing, I'm using tape because my hands are cold today. The studio feels like it's about 35 degrees. And my hands don't seem to be working very well. So the scotch tape helps hold it in place. Sometimes it's slippery. Get my little wire nail. I like the ones with the big heads in case I make too big of a hole. And um, it keeps the nail from disappearing into the hole. Okay, I'm going to speed it up because it's this is pretty much just poking the holes in the tin and pff, nailing the nails. I think probably the longest, the thing that takes the most time is a composition to figure out what you're going to make that, that and what tin you have to do it. That's why it's nice if you have a lot of tin because it gives you a lot of options. Okay, so that's um, that was the top of a uh, tea can that I cut the edges off because I really like the border on it. it. Makes a nice little frame, and since it's going to be covered uh, with the next layer, it doesn't really matter. Now, if you're going to do a lot of tin on top of each other. You want to make all the holes individually, and I'll I'll do a video of uh, troubleshooting about that so that um, you don't end up with too big of a hole if you just try and do them all at once. shaping up nicely. These little heart pieces were also um, part of the same tin that the corner pieces came from. Mm. Yep, better put some tape on there. The screwdriver is excellent for getting um, nails out if you're working with 
<laughs> nails and you hit them wrong and they bend over. Ooh, very miserable. Um, but uh, if you slide a, a piece of, or um, you slide the screwdriver underneath it and loosen it, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you destroy the piece of tin and that's just the way it goes. Okay, now I'm going to take an earth magnet to this little um, tin saucer from a uh, toy tea set because I really like it and I don't want to put a nail um, hole in it. So I just put that on the back and it sticks right there. And another thing that's really nice about it is it gives it some depth. depth. It makes it stick out a little bit. Yep, that's about it. Stay tuned for the next one.